But da Welcome to the Nerd Theorists. My name's Gaz, and a few days ago I ordered some posters and I ate some cheese. Now I know what you're thinking. Why the hell are you telling us this, Gaz? And more importantly, what sort of cheese was it? Well, I will tell you. It was camembert. But that's not important. What is important is it came in this. A rather nice little ceramic dish. And then the posters arrived. And they came in these. And I said to myself, well, bugger me, if that ain't a dice tower waiting to happen, I don't know what is. So, come with me now on a crafting adventure where we turn these and this and some other random household crap into a beautiful, epic addition to our D&D campaign. Welcome to the first erection-inducing episode of Trash to Tabletop. So, the idea behind this would be a, a hollowed out tree stump. That was the, the thing I envisioned when I first thought I should turn these into a dice tower. Um, so I'm going to put the smaller tube inside the bigger tube. So it's I've got a big, thick trunk and then hole at the bottom with the little ceramic dish for the dice to fall into. But I don't do plans, so I'm just gonna wing it basically so I'm trying to work out how big I want this thing um, where I'm gonna put the hole but basically it is just a case of see it in my head put it into practice so I'm going to mark off a few measurements to see if I'm happy with the height do the two tubes at the same height because they're gonna slot inside one another and then, um, like all good crafters, cut the tube up with a large fish filleting knife. Um, because I used to be a fishmonger, don't you know? Um, plus it's the sharpest knife I own. This cardboard is thick. A craft knife wouldn't, and it's too flexible. Now, like all good projects, this one went tits up very, very early. The trunk itself was the right height. I cut the V shape into the bottom of it where the dice would come out and then immediately realized that it was now floating above the, the tray, whereas it should have actually been sat on the floor with the hole. Um, but this is what happens when you don't write up plans. And uh, let's face it, I'm not the most professional person in the world. So I then thought, well, trunks splay. So I'll cut some slits and then it will sit nicely. And it didn't because obviously it was still too high. So uh, I ran to the crafting cupboard to crack out some foam off cuts and some duct tape because duct tape fixes everything. Now with duct tape in hand, I came back to repair the balls up that I'd made. Luckily the cobble tubes were considerably longer than I needed so I had some left over. So I cut a section from the bottom and uh, patch this on to try and level out the trunk with the tray and it was relatively successful. But it did make me realize that this project was probably gonna be 90% duct tape. But these things don't matter. This is the whole purpose of Trash to Tabletop. You're winging it. You're using stuff that was going in the bin and general purpose crap from around the house and trying to build something for basically free or very, very cheap. So, um, yeah, it started coming along, and here it is now. Almost looks like a dice tower. So we have a main structure, but it is flimsy, really flimsy. So I went and got a piece of old box, uh, some Amazon delivery, um, for a base. I thought, tape it on the bottom, tape it all together, make it nice and solid. Now, for any of you that have done any sort of health and safety, I apologize, uh, this was reckless and uh, I still have on my fingers I didn't draw any blood but obviously using a knife in this fashion um, is not the best idea kids safety first okay so now it's time to put the inner tube inside the outer tube and obviously it was now too bloody long because I'd changed the size of the outer tube and the top was sticking out, but that didn't matter. For now, we're just gonna pop it in and line it up with the hole at the bottom where the dice will come out. A Little bit of Sharpie action to uh, draw on where the hole will be, and then shave down the bit at the top so it fits in snugly. Now these pieces are all gonna be joined together, copious amounts of duct tape, glue, blood, sweat, 
No one's going to see it, so nobody cares. But it is taking shape. It was at this point that I realised that there was going to need to be some sort of internal slope from the inside tube to make the dice actually roll into the tray. And I thought, takeaway carton lid, obviously. Natural choice. I mean, what else are you going to use? I happen to have some knocking about, because I don't know if I mentioned, you used to be a fishmonger, don't you know? And uh, it's a really good card. Um, a little bit shiny, I apologise for the uh, reflective surface on a video, but there you go. And again, winging it. As you can see, there's plenty of beard scratching going on. Well, I'm trying to work out how the bloody hell this is going to go together. But, slowly but surely, it was working. Sort of. Almost. Nearly. So, as it is a dice tower, it's time for a dice roll, just to make sure it works. And it works! Look at your stupid happy face. So we have the functionality, which was the whole point of the project, but now it actually needs to look like a tree. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is fill in the gaps, and this massive gaping hole at the top is going to have to be the first thing. But luckily the pound shop's here to save me, with a big old pack of thin, crafty Evo foam cack for a pound. So far, apart from the duct tape, which was knocking about in the garage, which probably cost a couple of quid, I haven't actually spent any money. So this is going down as one pound spent on the dice tower so far. And as if by magic the stars had lined and kicked me right in the nutsack. I ran out of duct tape. So it was back to the shops and another three pounds spent. I got a double pack, I figured in for a penny and for a pound, I might as well cake the entire little bastard in duct tape to hold it together. So we are now up to a grand spend of four pounds on this project, but I now had lots of duct tape. So I got really carried away and basically covered the whole bastard thing. So what's next I hear you cry? Well, it's more duct tape, just a bit. And then I thought, well, I better work out how we're gonna roll some dice. It's big enough to roll multiple dice. And as I'm playing a sorcerer, there are occasions where I'm throwing down eight or nine dice at a time. So I had a crack at throwing four or five D20s all at the same time, and I discovered an issue straight away. The ceramic is quite hard, the drop was quite high, and the little buggers kept popping out and rolling across the table. So I cracked out the Evo foam again. I thought if I put a thin strip just inside the tray so it hits that as the, as the wall, it's a, a spongy surface and hopefully they won't bounce out. And then disaster struck. I drew on the wife's lovely dining room table with a Sharpie. Now, she says she watches our videos, and we will find out when I get a bollocking. And if I don't get a bollocking, I know she's not subscribed. Watch this space. Anyway, the phone went in, and the little buggers still bounced out. So I did a second layer, slightly higher, so there was an overhang. A little bit taller than a dice so when the dice does roll in it hits the bottom and it, this nearly solved the problem so I covered it in duct tape because you know why not I decided at this point that the base needed to be wider I really wanted it to be like an old gnarled tree stump that splayed out at the base and I knew that I had some loft insulation in the garage that I'd nicked out of a skip about eight years ago and thought, I'm going to use that one day. And today is that day. It does make a bloody mess though. As you can see, shearing pieces of it off, it goes all over the place. And then a small semi-naked child turned up demanding a baby bell and Ben and Holly and distracted me momentarily and made me break the back of it. Um, and you can see that I do suffer from some confusion when trying to work out what exactly I'm going to do with it, but I got there. The child did come back, still demanding food and cartoons, but I managed to get him to bugger off long enough to uh, break it, basically. But it's nothing that a bit of duct tape won't fix. With a bit of filleting knife action, I soon managed to whittle this lump of foam down into a reasonable shape. Now, I did start to wonder if I should just turn this into some sort of Wellington boot dice tower because that's the way it was looking. But in my mind, I knew where I was going at this point. It, it had structure, it was solid, it wasn't falling apart, and I had loads of duct tape. So, you know, what could possibly go wrong? But as you can see, as I shear away some of the foam, it is taking shape. It is beginning to look a little bit like a fucking Wellington boot. And so begins another five minutes of me caking the little bastard in duct tape. Yes, that's right. This entire clip is just me covering the work I've just done in duct tape. But it's good duct tape. 
and it is holding it together. And, you know, you're not here to judge me, so shut up. Anyway, enough of the duct tape. It was time to actually do some foamy, crafty shit. As I mentioned earlier, I'd got a pack of Evo foam sheets from the pound shop, and there was a lot in it. I'd used one, possibly two, so far. In fact, I think I just used two after the same one. Anyway, I had a lot left, and I thought, right, this stuff would be ideal for giving it a bark effect. So I measured off some strips, and I cut lots and lots and lots of them with the idea of gluing them all around lengthways to give the tree a, a bark effect and also fill out the slope a little bit more so it wasn't so abrupt at the bottom. Now as you can probably notice I'm beginning to lose the light, I'm beginning to lose my will to live. Um, I still had plenty of duct tape but I was getting tired at this point and I was realising that this was going to be a, a couple of days project but it was worth it. I was happy with the work I'd done so far, it was coming along nicely and I knew that there was potential in it. So I cut off some more strips and started thinking of the bigger picture, how it was going to look once it was finished. Just as I was about to start gluing the foam on, I realised that this thing looked a little bit bare. I wanted it to have a little bit more character. So I thought I'd pop a branch on one side, just a torn off, raggedy old branch. So I uh, grabbed the uh, tin foil, which is always a handy modelling component. Obviously I had a lot of it knocking around the house. And just fashioned the little two-pronged branch glued it onto the side just to give it a little bit more shape. Then came the long arduous process of gluing on the foam. Now like I'd already mentioned it was getting late, I was getting tired, it was getting dark but I wanted it to look decent before the end of the first day and I realised that gluing this foam on it was really starting to take shape, really starting to get the feel of a tree with that branch on and the bark going on it was working and I knew if I left it at this point I wouldn't be able to sleep so I had to at least get it looking tree-ish before the end of the first day and then I said bollocks to it and went to bed so this is day two bright and early and uh, oh I did forget to mention that I did spend a little bit more money this is £1.50 on some all-purpose Wilco glue so I think that puts us up to £4.50 so far in the grand total but as you can see it is really starting to take shape I left some of the foam overhanging at the top so it looked like a bit of uh, bark I didn't want it uniform cut at the top like it had actually been cut down I wanted it to look like it had been struck by lightning or fallen down rotted whatever so I did leave some some of the bark showing at the top just to give it a little bit more shape and it is genuinely starting to look like a tree now I'm really happy with how it's going and uh, yeah it's looking promising. This was obviously quite an arduous task. There was a lot of foam. I did need to cut off, uh, I think, another three or four sheets before I had enough to cover the entire tree. But it is worth it. It is looking good. The thing that was striking me now was that this foam was very flexible and there was some quite severe gaps underneath it. So I was then wondering how the hell I was actually going to resolve this once it was finished. But like all good men, I didn't worry about the future, I just cracked on with what was happening now and pretended that everything was gravy. A few more Evo sheets later and about half a tube of glue and we're almost there. It's taking shape, it's looking good and uh, yeah, I'm happy. It has taken a lot of mucking about this foam but in fairness, it's barely cost me anything so far. It hasn't been that much work and it is looking good. Now you could have done this with cardboard to really save yourself some money but for a quid is it worth it and plus cardboard isn't as flexible it would crease so that'd be a tight ass spend a pound now the bark was complete i wanted some um, a bit of shape i wanted like old ivy climbing up here and rough bits of deep troughs and sticky out bits and general barkage tree bullshit now i know i had a big piece of rope in the garage that i bought for something i never used and i got some string and I think three different types of rope widths and thought right cracking glue some of this on now I don't know what this rope was made of but it didn't like glue it just would not stick it wasn't having it so after fighting with it for a few minutes I got the arsehole and threw it away so with the rope idea out the window I went back to the trusted tin foil which in fairness I should have just used from the start I knew it was a good medium for modeling with it took the shape far better and it glues far better so I just 
wound lots and lots of pieces up and then I could just stick it on wherever I wanted, build the shape up and gradually it started working. It's taking shape and looking at it I decided that I, although happy with the main structure, that little branch that I built just didn't look right. It was more like an antler than a branch. So I figured I'd just cut it off. There's nothing worse than making something, knowing something's niggling you and leaving it, and then at the end of the project thinking, shit, why did I not resolve that while I had the opportunity? Now, because I'd used quite a lot of tinfoil, I had a tinfoil tube knocking about, and that seemed the ideal branch. So I've cut that to shape, stuck it on, and then I could continue putting my tinfoil vines and whatnot on it, and it was a much better idea, and I'm glad I did it, because that initial branch just didn't cut the mustard. Yes, the glue gun is out. I know I said I was keeping it cheap and that glue from Wilco's is fine. It works perfectly, but it does take a long time to dry. And I didn't want this running on too long. So I cracked out the glue gun. Now, if you've got a glue gun, great. Use your glue gun. Well, you're gonna burn yourself, we all do. But it is quicker and it dries a lot faster. But if you do wanna keep this cheap, as this is a trash to tabletop, buy cheap glue and just wait, be patient. I mean, you won't be, because, you know, you're into this sort of shit, like me. You're probably a bloke, because women are far too sensible to do anything stupid like this. So get your glue gun out. But it is an option. That's all I'm saying. Once the main vines were done, I decided that I'd make some smaller ones to branch off of the bigger ones. It was looking really nice, and I figured in this situation, more is more. It wanted to be a rutted, rugged-looking tree, so I carried on making lots and lots of small vines. At this point, a small child turned up because he'd found the uh, discarded branch that I'd thrown across the room and thought I needed it. I waited till he wasn't looking and threw it across the room again. And he went and collected it and brought it back, like some sort of weird game of fetch. Anyway, it's looking good. The smaller vines are going on, and I'm happy with the progress so far. I'm going to go and get my baby bell now. And now the fun bit! I got some all-purpose fillet from the pound shop, although it was £1.75, which seems wrong, seeing as it was from the pound shop, but that's inflation, I guess. Now, this is a, a sort of all-purpose wood polyfiller substitute, and in fairness, you probably could get a better substitute that would be more pliable and solid when it's finished, but we are trying to keep this cheap. Like I say, £1.75, so we're up to now, what, £5-ish? somewhere 550 I'm sure Dave will pop up a lovely overlay over the top of this with how much I've spent he's good like that um, but yes got a lolly stick and started smearing this on and the great thing is because the idea behind this was to have a gnarled wood effect I didn't need to be careful I was just slopping it on creating lots of little cracks and nooks and crannies that would take the paint quite nicely and yeah it took a long time but the whole tub I think I think there's still a little bit left. So the whole tub did do the, the whole tree. And just when I thought I was happily in my little hobby zone covering my tree in filler, the cheese eating monster came back. And after hanging around for a few minutes and asking what I was doing, he promptly fell on his ass, which was very entertaining and I caught it on camera. He then disappeared, came back, realized he could see himself on camera, hung about for a bit longer, and then for the extra double whammy, fell on his ass again. Kids. Anyway. Like I said, the tub lasted nicely, there's still a little bit left, and I managed to cake the entire tree with a heavy duty load. But, I don't know whether it was because it was cheap, and I don't know whether it was because the house wasn't particularly warm, but it was a good 48 hours before it was dry enough to paint, which was a little bit of a, a niggle. I, I am quite impatient and having to wait two days before I could crack on, really, chafed my ass. So this is it now primed in grey and it's time to paint and I got some brown paint from the works and this was two pounds which I've lost count now. We're seven, eight, somewhere around there. Dave, inlay, uplay, where are you going to put it? Put it there, put it right there. Anyway, um, yeah so this was two pounds. I didn't buy any black because there was some black in the kids um, craft cupboard. I wanted to do a really, really dark brown base on it. However, this black paint didn't seem to have any pigment in it whatsoever. And it didn't matter how much I put in it, it didn't change the colour of the brown. It didn't get any darker. It was like magic paint. It just disappeared. So I went back to the works and I got some black for another two pounds. 
taking my total two. Ping! Once I finished with a big brush, I went and dug out one of the kids' little craft brushes and with the help of a torch to really make sure I was seeing every little nook and cranny, I went round it and filled in all the gaps. There was quite a bit that I'd missed with that big brush, but it was still faster than going over the whole thing with a small brush. And I do admit, off camera, I did take it into the garden and go over it again because there were still bits I'd missed in the bad light. Although this looks like quite a bright video, um, that's thanks to editing and filtering, it is quite dark in this room. So yes, so uh, after a couple of attempts with a big brush and a small brush, um, big brush, little brush cardboard box, I finished and it was fully painted and it was pretty good. With the base colour down, I decided to dry brush on the brown paint straight from the tube. It was a, a nice burnt ember colour and I thought it would give it some good highlights. So I wiped as much of it off as I could onto some toilet paper and then dry brushed it on. It dried pretty quickly doing this method and it also dried darker than I expected. So I went over it again and was a little bit more liberal this time because I decided that I could always mix up more lighter and go over it again and really bring the bring the highlights out. It's such a big model anyway, it's gonna catch the light, but I just wanted a few different areas of, of browns, a few different shades of browns to really bring the detail out. And another two pounds spent on some white paint. Uh, at this point, I knew I wasn't gonna be spending much more money. I was around the 10 pound mark, so I thought, sod it, another couple of quid on some paint. So I got some white, mixed it with the brown to bring out the highlights even more and then went over the, the really sticky out bits. I didn't go as mad as I did with the initial brown. Um, I wanted some real highlights on this, so I went over it again. And as you can see from the video, it, it, it does instantly bring, bring the highlights out really nicely. Reaching the final straight now, I decided that the cut pieces of wood would have the internal wood showing through. They needed to be lighter. So as I still had some of the mixed up lighter brown in a bowl, I put loads of white into another bowl and then just a little smidge of that lighter brown to mix it up to color the top and the end of the branch on the right hand side, just so it looked a little bit more like cut wood. Once the paint was dry, I decided to put some ring detail stuff on the top and on the branch with a Sharpie, just to make it look a little bit more tree-like. It doesn't really show up very well on the video, but trust me, it's amazing. It really is. Best bit of it, you just can't see it. And then I wanted to put a bit of sort of greeny, mossy colour on it. Uh, just use some of my model paint that was knocking about, so that doesn't add to the money. And I had the sharpie already, so that doesn't add either. So stop judging me, I didn't spend any more money. And once that was done, it, it, it's there. If you don't want to spend any more money, you want to keep this as cheap as possible, and you really do want it to just be pieces of shite from the bin that you turn into a dice tower, this is enough, it's finished. But, because I've got loads of bits and bobs knocking about the house, and I really was enjoying this build, if you do want to spend some more money, I will continue and I will show you what I did to it after this. But if you want to stop now, it's fine. It's perfect. It's fine. Move on. But let's uh, get busy with the fizzy. The first thing I wanted to do, uh, if I'm going to go overboard and completely do whatever I want to do with this model, was use some of my model shade paint um, to bring out the colours in the top. It was too light, I decided the top with the cut bits. So I used Rikram Flesh Shade uh, Citadel shade paint to bring those colours together and make it a little bit darker uh, so there wasn't such an abrupt change in colours between the cut bit and the rest of the wood. And then I also had this weird Christmas decoration thing that I'd got um, in the sale for a couple of quid, again, not very expensive. And I just tore it to pieces and used that as moss all over the, the bottom. Now I'm using Mod Podge glue here. Obviously you can use whatever dirt, cheap PVC, <coughs> excuse me, not PVC, PVA glue, whatever you want on it. Um, Wilco's is, is particularly good there, their craft PVA glue, I think it's only a couple of quid. Um, I add some Mod Podge anyway, knocking about, so I use that, but you don't, don't use that normally because it's expensive, but I'm um, a show off. Next up, I got this little bag of 
spongy green foamy stuff that looked a hell of a lot like cannabis um, but it wasn't it was only two pounds so obviously uh, not that I know how much that stuff costs because anyway um, yeah so started sticking that on as well I also got these little um, sticky grass pads and flowers I went about just sticking loads of foliage to it and the more I put on the better it looked so I really just went to town and stuck loads and loads of bits all over it Next up, I decided that I needed some mushrooms. So I made myself some Korean sticky rice with mushrooms. But then I decided I needed some mushrooms from my tree. So I cracked out the trillions. Little plastic beads that you put in boiling water and they go transparent and soft and pliable. And then you can smush them up and make whatever shape you want. It's brilliant stuff. Now that bag that I'm using there, there's not many left in it, but I've had that bag for years. It was like a kilogram bag and it was about 12 quid. I've had it for ages and I've used it for so many different things. You put it in boiling water, it becomes pliable and transparent. You shape it on whatever you want and then as it goes hard, it goes white. So you know it's set. Now I wanted some of those big mushroomy things that you see on the side of trees. I think they're called dried saddle or something like that on the side and then I wanted some normal little ones. I got some cocktail sticks and some of the bigger thicker skewers. Uh, just cut little pieces off. I'm not even going to bother paint the stalks because they look alright. And then just with a few little beads of thermoplastic just made little toppers for them um, for the front for a bit more decoration. I decided at this point I'd been a little bit skimpy with the detailing around the back. Um, the front looked really good and I thought that's the only bit people are going to see. So what I thought I'd do uh, was a little technique that I'd come across completely by accident. Um, which is just gluing parsley on because it looks a little bit like ivy. So with my PVA glue, I just paint the trail up the side of the tree as ivy would follow and then just completely dusted it in parsley. Now it looks pretty good to, to start with. It does, as it dries out, it loses its colour a bit, uh, but that's easily resolved with just a bit of water down green paint. It soon freshens it back up again. But as you can see, it, it does look like ivy um, and it smells nice. Mushrooms are now dry and glued on, and time to crack out the model paints again. Again, Citadel, uh, I think it was a, a, a tan brown that I used for the mushrooms on the side, and then it was corn red that I used for the little ones on the front. And uh, this thermoplastic takes paint amazingly. It is a plastic after all, it's, it sets like a normal plastic and it takes paint really, really well. Um, the issue I had here was I made four little mushrooms for the front and as I was painting them the top fell off the back one. Uh, I was very very low on super glue. I don't want to spend any more money on this model so I was refusing to go back to the shop. I could not get the bloody thing back on and after careful consideration I decided that I probably only needed three mushrooms anyway so I threw the bloody thing away. So all that was left at this point was to paint the nice little white dots all over the mushrooms. And I used uh, bone wrap, I think it's called. Another Citadel paint anyway. Um, obviously, like I've said, you, you don't need to go as into detail as I have with this if you did want to knock something up yourself. And if you do, pop it in the comments, I'd love to see it. Uh, but this was, like I say, the final little push, the white dots on the small mushrooms at the front, and then I used my Rugman Flesh Shade again on the mushrooms on the side to bring the color out a little bit more. And that was it, it was complete. I did spray it down with a clear varnish just to make sure that the paint didn't chip off after this, but all in all, happy bunny. And uh, here she is, the finished article. Now, have I made mistakes? Yes, obviously, you've seen them. Um, what have I learned? Nothing, I'm a man. I learned nothing from my experiences. Um, there are still bits <laughs> that I've missed. There's still little white bits, as you can see, that I've missed, but I don't care. Look at it, it's glorious, it's massive. I keep the cameras this way around, I get confused. Um, yeah, it's lovely. I'm very happy with it. Let's have a go. 14, that's all right. Um, the first actual test roll I did with it, 
um, I got a natural one, which was very disheartening. This will be making its debut this Sunday on Nerd D&D. Uh, we have some surprises. We do, honestly. Um, shit's going down, man, after the Hobgoblins uh, last session. So yes, this will be making its debut on Sunday. And I hope you enjoyed watching. I enjoyed making this immensely. This Trash to Tabletop will continue um, with other episodes. I have other ideas. I have other pieces of crap that need to be turned into things. Um, I have time on my hands because shit and stuff. So yes, here she is. I'm very happy with her. <laughs> There's parsley everywhere. It's lovely, isn't it? It's big. It's very big. So yes, thanks for watching. Oh, there goes the mic. Sorry. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I need money for a new microphone. And um, yeah. A lot of fun that, really enjoyed it. Any input, or if you've made anything like this, please feel free to comment. If you would like any more details, I, th I think I covered everything in the video, but if there's anything else you'd like to know. Um, and money-wise, I'm sure Dave will give you an updated total in my hands right there of how much it cost. Uh, or a picture of a dick, I don't know. He'll edit this afterwards. It depends what sort of it. So yeah, thanks for watching. It's been lovely. And remember, Nerd D&D, this will be uh, coming out soon and we'll be debuting it. Excellent campaign. And don't forget Magic as well, coming to the finale of our Magic the Gathering Commander season. Watch me get my ass handed to me once again. Good night.